Hello everyone, welcome back to Atreya you Crochet. So in today's video, I will be bringing you yet another video in my How to Crochet a Scarf and whatever the time frame is series. I started this series last year and it was very popular so I thought I would start up with another round of scarves for this fall and winter season. In today's video, I will be making this beautiful scarf. It is known by some as the arcade stitch that's the stitch that's being used to create this scarf and yeah let's just get right to it all right so things you will need include a darning weaving tapestry needle as always to weave in the yarn a pair of scissors to cut your yarn as always uh, a ball Scan of yarn. This is by Scarfy. Um, well, this is by Lion Brand Yarns and it's Scarfy. I'll leave a link in the description if I can find it online. And then this is a bulky five yarn. So normally I use medium four, uh, but this is a bulky five. So I'm excited about that. And then this specific ball or type of yarn thickness it calls for 6.5 millimeter. That is. US and I think that's a K yeah it's a K uh, but I'm using a seven millimeter US so just 0.5 millimeter higher because I don't know where my 6.5 is and that 0.5 won't make that big of a deal so yeah let's get to this <laughs> all right so starting out we're gonna start with a slip knot so you wrap it around your finger twist exchange and you wrap that over your finger and we're going to pull this one over that one and off our finger while we're pulling up on the one that's still on our finger see how I'm pulling up now we're going to insert our size L 7 millimeter once again that is US into the loop and then pull to tighten all right, so the multiple for this scarf is six stitches plus one, okay? So I'm going to go for 19 because six times three is 18 plus one equals 19. So I'm gonna chain out 19 stitches. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. You can see that this is definitely a bulky yarn because look how wide that is. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to put a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So here's the hook. <laughs> here's the first chain from the hook. Here's the second chain from the hook. We're going to insert our hook into the second chain. So we're skipping that first chain that's closest to the hook and we're going to go into the second chain. And we're going to put a single crochet. So now that I've inserted my crochet hook into the chain, I yarn over and I pull through to the front. And that leaves me with two loops on my crochet hook, one and two. Now I'm gonna yarn over and go through both loops, one and two. And now I've just made a single crochet right there, okay? Now I am going to chain three, one, two, three. And I'm gonna skip three chains down here, so I'm gonna skip that chain that chain and that chain so let me pull this down for a second and i'll get my this color darning weaving tapestry needle okay so this is where i put the single crochet right there in that chain i chain three one two three and i'm gonna skip three i'm gonna skip one i'm gonna skip two and i'm gonna skip three these three chains We'll count for these three chains for these three stitches okay so that means that in this fourth chain that's where i'm going to put my next single crochet okay so right there in that fourth chain 
So skip, skip, skip in there. That's where I'm going to put a single crochet. Remember, when you single crochet, when you make one, you don't yarn over first. You just enter the stitch. And now you yarn over, pull through two loops, and then you yarn over and you go through two, like that. Okay? Now we're going to put one single crochet in the next two chains. So next chain is there, we put one single crochet, okay? And then the next chain is there, and we put another single crochet, like that, okay? And this is what we have. And now we are going to repeat what we just did. So we're gonna chain three again, so chain three, one, two, three, like that, okay? And we're gonna skip three chains, so skip that one, that's the next one, skip that one, that's the next one, skip that one, that's the next one, and then that fourth one, that's where we're gonna put a single crochet. And then we're going to put another one in the next one, and then another one in the next chain, okay? So this is what you have. So, once you're down to five chains, it obviously depends on how many initial chains you, you made, but once you're down to five chains, which we are right now, one, two, three, four, five, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain three like normal, one, two, three, okay? And we're going to skip three chains like normal, one, two, three. So we're skip one, skip two, skip three, and we're left with these two chains on the end, one, two. So we're just gonna put one single crochet in each of those two remaining chains, like that. Okay, and this is what you have. So to recap, we chained out 19 stitches. Remember 19 is a multiple of six plus one. So if you want to make it wider, you could go six times five, <laughs> which is 30 plus one. And then that'd be 31 stitches, but we did 19. Then we put one single crochet in the second chain from the hook when the hook was there, okay, which is there. Then we chain three and we skip three stitches. And then, then that fourth, chain that next one we put one single crochet and the next one one single crochet and then and the next one one single crochet and then we repeat it chain three skip three chains and then three single crochets one in each of the next three chains then we chain three skip three and we were down to the last five chains of this row so for those last two we just put one single crochet in each, okay? So that is how you complete the first row. All right, so moving on. So for the next row, row two, we're going to chain one, turn our work. All right, so remember we had two single crochets on the end, one, two, right? We've chained one, we turned our work. We're going to skip this next single crochet so we have the chain one coming out of the single crochet on the very end we skip the next single crochet and we're going to go immediately to this chain three space right there and that is where we're going to put five double crochets okay to make a double crochet you yarn over enter the chain three space so that big area yarn over pull through to the front you'll have three loops yarn over go through two one two Yarn over, go through two, one, two. Yarn over, go back into the chain three space. Yarn over, pull through to the front. Three loops, yarn over, go through two, one, two. Yarn over, go through two, one, two. We have three more double crochets to put into this chain three space. Yarn over, into the space. Yarn over, pull through to the front. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over. Enter the chain three space, yarn over, pull through to the front, three loops, yarn over, go through two, one, two, yarn over, go through two, one, two. 
like that. One, two, three, four. We have one more to make. So yarn over, enter the chain through space, yarn over, pull through to the front, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Okay. Now what we're going to do, if you remember now we have these three single crochets together, right? So we're going to skip the first single crochet and we're always going to work in this, this middle or second single crochet there. So we're just going to put a single crochet in to the second single crochet there. So skip one, here's the second one or the middle one and put a single crochet like that. Okay. Now we're back to another chain three space. So we're going to put five double crochet into that chain three space. So yarn over, enter, and make your double crochets. That's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, back in there. And that's five. Okay. And we're going to repeat. So here's the three single crochets one, two, three. We skip that one and work in this middle one or second one, and we put a single crochet in there. So that's why we're not yarning over first. We just enter the top of the stitch, slice the icing off the top of the stitch, yarn over, pull through to the front, two loops, yarn over, go through two. Okay. We have one more chain three space, so we're going to put five double crochet in there. So let's just get to making them. And don't forget, you guys can slow this down on YouTube if I'm crocheting too fast. Three, four, and five. Okay, so this is what we have turning out to be pretty pretty <laughs> all right and now we're just going to put a single crochet into that turning chain okay so just find the corner chain and put a single crochet in it like that and that you guys is row two so moving on to row three we're going to chain three, so we'll start by chaining three. One, two, three. We'll turn our work. Okay. And now we're going to skip this very first double crochet, and in the center three, that's where we're going to put our single crochets, one in each double crochet. Okay, the center three. So we skip this one, and then in the second double crochet there. We'll slice the icing off the top of the cake or stitch and put a single crochet. One, and then in the next one, one, and then in that next one, one. Okay? So we chain three, we skip the a double crochet, and in the center three double crochet, we put one single crochet. Now we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And that's going to be the bridge that gets us over to these three center double crochet in that fan. Okay, So you see we have this group of five. We always skip the first one and we put single crochets in those center three. Okay, And remember this chain three is the bridge. So we chain three, skip this first double crochet, and then put one single crochet in the next three double crochets two and then three okay we need a bridge because we need to get over to this fan now so we chain three one two three skip this first double crochet and put one single crochet into the center three that's two and then the third one three okay and now we need a little bridge to get over to the end so we only chain two one, two, and then we put a single crochet in that corner stitch or chain, okay? And that's what we have. All right, so moving on to the next row, we're going to chain three, 
one, two, three. We're going to turn our work. And remember, this is a chain two space right here, right? So in that chain two space, we're going to put two double crochets. So I'll just go in there and put one double crochet and then go back in that chain two space and put your two, your second double crochet. So that creates like a little fan on the end. All right, and now we have these three single crochets. And remember, whenever you have three single crochets, one, two, three, we always put a single crochet in that middle one. So we skip this one, put a single crochet in the middle one, like that, okay? Now we have a chain three space. We already know what we do when we have chain three spaces. We put five double crochet into that chain three space, don't we? Yes. So we're gonna do that. One, back in there. Two, back in there. Three, back in there. Four, and back in there for five, okay? Now we have these three single crochets. We know whenever we have three single crochets like that, we skip the first one and we put a single crochet into that middle one, that second one. So a single crochet. We have another chain three space here. So we know we put five double crochets into that chain three space. One, two, three, four, and five, okay? Now we have another three single crochets, one, two, three. We work into the second one and we put a single crochet. Remember what single crochets, you do not yarn over first, you just enter the stitch. So slice the icing off the top of the cake, yarn over, pull through to the front, yarn over, go through two. And then on the end, this is where we have that chain three. We're going to put three double crochets into a corner chain. So they call this the turning chain. You can go to the second chain up, third one. I like to get the second one. Okay, so three double crochets. So yarn over, enter the corner or the turning chain and put one, go back in there for two, and then back in there for three. And you see their symmetry. We started, we had the chain three and then two double crochets and the chain two space here. And then on this end, we put three double crochets uh, into that turning chain. You can work into the space if you want, but I kind of like working into the chain. It just gives it a look. So you see we're getting these gaps now. Okay, and that's what the arcade stitch does. It will create these um, little cutouts, and so as your scarf gets bigger and bigger, it becomes more pronounced and more noticeable. So it's a really cool stitch. All right, moving on. All right, so moving on to row, row five, we start by chaining one, turning your work. Okay, we skip that last double crochet that we made, but we do go into the second one, this middle double crochet, and we put a single crochet there. Okay. Now we need to get to this fan. Remember, we need a bridge to get over there, so that means we have to chain three. One, two, three. And remember, once you get the bridge over there, it's kind of like dropping the drawbridge, right? Here's the drawbridge down. Okay, now you can cross over. So we skip that first double crochet as always, and then we put one single crochet into these center three double crochets. So here's that first center one. That's one single crochet. And the next one, the middle one, that's two. And then the next one, that's three. So we put three single crochets into those three center double crochets. Here's the five. One, two, three, four, five. We skip the first one and then we put one to the second one, put one, 
put another one on the next one, put another one on the next one, and then that left one on the end, okay? Now we need to get to the next fan, so we have to chain three. One, two, three. Draw bridge, drop down, okay, it gets me over here. I skip that first double crochet and I put a single crochet in the next three. Double crochet, so that's one, that's two, and then that's three, okay? We need to get over here now, and we're almost at the end, but we need a draw bridge, so chain one, two, three, drop <laughs> and we're gonna put a single crochet in that middle remember this is the chain three and plus the two double crochets so we'll skip the first double crochet we'll go to the second double crochet put a single crochet in it and then in the turning chain on the end we just put another single crochet like that okay and that's our pattern you guys so we're going to repeat basically rows two through five to complete our scarf. And you're going to see that it's going to give us these little gaps or cutouts. And it's going to look super, super cool. All right. So, yeah, I'm going to crochet a little bit on this. And then I will be right back for you. It'll be a little while for me, but I'll be right back for you to go through that pattern again. And don't worry, I know it may seem like a lot initially, but as you continue to repeat this pattern, it's going to become second nature. You're gonna be able to look at a row and know exactly what you have to do. Remember, repetition is key. All right, I'll see you soon. All right, so as you can see, I'm definitely making some progress. And while I've been crocheting, I was trying to think of a way that I could make this pattern a little bit easier for you to commit to memory. I don't know if you guys saw my last video, but basically you were only repeating one row after a certain point. So that one was super easy. This one is easy, but there are, I think, three or four rows that you have to commit to memory, and they're a little bit similar. So because of that, I've decided to come up with some rules for repeating this pattern, which should definitely help you commit it to memory much faster, okay? So row number one is that if you begin a row one way, then you begin the next row the same way until you've achieved two consecutive rows the same way, okay? And when I say begin a row one way, that means one way that you can begin a row is by chaining one, okay? Another way that you can begin a row is by chaining three, okay? So if you begin one row with chaining one, then you have to have two consecutive rows where you chain one, and then you move on to the next one, which ties into row number two, which is after two rows of chain one, move to two rows that begin with chaining three, okay? So basically, you'll chain one, row A, then row B, you'll chain one, and now you have two consecutive rows. So then it's time to switch. So row C, you'll chain three, and then that's only one row where you began with a chain three. And so row D, you'll chain three, and now you have two consecutive rows of chain three. And then you'll go back to two rows of chain one. Okay, all this will make sense because I'm going to actually crochet some more once I get to a lighter section so that you can see it. And I'm going to point out these rules as we move along, okay? The next rule is when crocheting across what I'm calling fans, okay, this is that uh, grouping of five double crochet, okay? Those are large fans. We also have these smaller fans, what I'm calling small fans. They're made up of three double crochets, okay? But basically, when crocheting across fans, Remember to drop the drawbridge, okay? <laughs> and you'll remember the drawbridge is that chain three, okay? I like to try to think of fun ways for you to remember things. So whenever you're crocheting across fans, don't forget to drop the drawbridge, which is that chain three. And then put one single crochet into the center double crochet. Okay, once again, this will make sense shortly when I 
start crocheting some more for you on camera. I'm going to point these things out. The fourth rule is always place large fans. Remember, large fans are those five double crochets that are grouped together, right? Always place large fans into chain three spaces. So you can kind of see these spaces that you see in this pattern. That's where we have the chain three, and that's where we crochet the large fan into it, okay? Number five, the fifth rule is small fans, which remember are made up of three double crochets, only occur at the edges. So I don't know how well you can see this, but basically in the center of your scarf, you're always gonna have the large fans, the fans that are made up of five double crochets. However, on the edges, that's where you get the small fans, those ones that are made up of three double crochets. Let's go to this lighter color. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. See, that's a small fan and it's made up of three double crochets. You don't see any small fans in the center, only on the edges, okay? So small fan and small fan. All right, rule number six is when dropping the drawbridge, which you'll remember is that chain three, from the last fan of that row, only chain two, okay? So remember, when we're going across, we're dropping the drawbridges. When we're going across these fans, we drop the drawbridge. But when it's time to drop the drawbridge from the last large fan, you only chain two because you're close to the edge and you don't need as long of a drawbridge to get you to the end. Once again, this will become clear as I start to crochet more, okay? Row number seven. Rows in which you crochet your large fans always begin with a chain three. Almost always. <laughs> there is a slight exception, but this will make more sense as we crochet through it, all right? And then the final rule is always crochet one single crochet into the middle single crochet of a group of three single crochet, which probably sounds really, really confusing. But basically, whenever you have three single crochets together, you're always gonna crochet one single crochet in the center of that group. I know I've said this a million times, but this will make sense very soon once I start crocheting. I'm gonna point these things out, okay? So stay tuned for the next section because at that point I'm going to start the repeat pattern, okay? And I'll timestamp it so that if you need to go through it a few times before you feel comfortable venturing off on your own, um, you'll know exactly where the repeat starts in the video, okay? See you soon. All right, you guys, so we are at the repeat section, okay? So even if you don't understand what I'm saying, just do everything that I'm doing in this section and keep coming back at the end of the repeat. I'll tell you when to come back and you will complete your scarf, okay? So as you can see, I just completed that. So you'll see at the beginning of this row, I started with a chain one, okay? And I saw in the previous row, I started with a chain three. So this is my first chain one row. So that means that when I turn my work, I need to chain one because remember the rule where I need two consecutive rows that start the same way. The last row started with the chain one, so this row has to start with a chain one. Now we go to the next rule. Ah, here's a chain three space. That's That means that's where we put our large or big fan. A big fan is five double crochets. So I'm just gonna go into this chain three space and make my five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. Now what's next? Oh, here's another rule. I see three consecutive single crochets. Remember, whenever you see three consecutive single crochets, you have to put a single crochet in that center one, that middle one right there. So I'll skip the first one and put a single crochet into the second one. All right, now we're at another chain three space, which means I put another big or large fan, which is five double crochets. So I'll just make those really quickly three, if 
back in there. Four, back in there for five, okay? All right, here's another grouping of three single crochets. I skip the first one, go on the second one, put a single crochet. Here's another chain three space, so I put another big fan in there. Two, three, four, and five. All right, and now I have this single crochet and that turning chain that chain one so I just go in there into the chain one the turning chain and put a single crochet another rule that I did not mention is that you want symmetry meaning you want to start and end every row so that they look pretty much the same the way you started to how you ended it okay all right so that was our second row in which we started with the chain one so now it's time to switch to the other way that we start the row, which is chain three. So we chain three, one, two, three. We'll turn our work. And remember, whenever you're crossing the fans or the, yeah, the fans, you want to chain three across them. You got to make the drawbridge. All right, so we have this chain three. Whenever you have a fan and we're crossing them, you always skip the first double crochet of the fan and you go into the second one. And then you put one single crochet into those center three. So we have this grouping of five double crochet. We're gonna skip the first one and we're gonna put a single crochet into one, two, three, and then we're gonna skip that last one, that fifth one. All right, let's do it. So skip, one single crochet, next stitch, one single crochet, next stitch one single crochet all right we need to get from this one to that one so we have to create a drawbridge so we create a drawbridge by chaining three one two three drop the drawbridge skip the first double crochet and we're going to repeat what we just did put one single crochet into those three center double crochets okay now we need to get from there to there we need to create a drawbridge, one, two, three, chaining three, drop the drawbridge. You'll see it'll pretty much land you over to that second double crochet in that grouping of five, okay? So we skip the first one, go into the second one, and then put one single crochet into those center three double crochet, all right? This is now another rule, this takes us to another rule where we have to get from here to here, but there's not really much distance that we need to go. So we don't need a chain three. Instead, we just chain two. So we make a draw bridge that's a little bit shorter and we go to that turning chain, a chain one and put a single crochet, okay? All right, so this was one row of that began with chain three. So we know in the next row, we're also going to have to chain three because we need two consecutive rows where we start the row the same way. So let's chain three. One, two, three, and let's turn our work. All right. Remember I said that whenever you have a small fan, the small fans are made up of three double crochets, okay? Now with this row, because this is a little itty bitty chain two space, we don't need a big fan, which is made up of five double crochet. We only need two more stitches to make a small fan. So in this chain two space, we're gonna put two double crochets. So yarn over, go into the chain two space and put one and then put two, okay? And that takes us to the other rule, which is the small fans are always at the edge, okay? All right, now we're at a grouping of three single crochets, one, two, three. Remember, whenever we see uh, three single crochets together, we always skip the first one and put a single crochet in that middle one. All right, the next rule is, ah, we see a chain three space. This one is bigger, so this one needs a big fan. So we put five double crochet in there. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, here are three single crochets together again. 
skip the first one, work into the second one, putting a single crochet. Here's that chain three space, so we know we put a big fan in there, five double crochet, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Three, single crochet, skip the first one, go into the second one and put a single crochet in, into it, okay? And now we're almost at the end. Remember, you always want to make it symmetrical. So think about what did you do at the beginning of this row? Ah, we had that small fan. So we need a small fan over here. Well, the way we're going to do it is you can put your three double crochet into that chain three space, if you will. But you can also put three double crochet into the turning chain. And I like to work in the one, two, second chain up. You can work in the third chain up. Okay, so you have options. You can go in here. You can go in the top chain of that chain three, or you can go in the center. I'm going to go in the center, okay? So yarn over, go into that, wherever you decide to go. <laughs> I'm choosing the second chain up, and I'm going to put three double crochet into that same chain, okay? So that's two, back in there for three. All right, so I know that I started this row with the chain three and the previous one with the chain three so now I know that with the next row I have to start with the chain one so I'll chain one all right this is a row where we have fans so that means we're gonna have to drop the drawbridge to get across but here is the caveat the exception that I was saying exists because I said you always chain three across that's kind of true. Or I said you always start with a chain three. This is the exception. We started with a chain one. But before we get to making that chain three, we have to we have to create a little imagine yourself creating a little guy, okay? That's gonna be traveling across. So whenever you have a small fan, you wanna create a little guy. Our little guy is gonna be a single crochet. So we'll skip this end stitch and go into the next stitch this second or middle double crochet there we're going to put a single crochet there okay so we have our little guy right now we're going to start dropping the drawbridge so that that guy can get across so we'll chain three one two three drop the drawbridge which means we skip that first double crochet and work into one single crochet into the middle three double crochets of the large fan so one next one two, next one, three, next one. All right, we need to get from there to there, so we need to drop the drawbridge, chain three, drop it, and work one, next one, two, next one, three, okay? We need to get from there to there. Here, so we chain three, one, two, three, drop the drawbridge, but because this is a little fan, then what we do, we still skip that first double crochet, but we only have two more stitches left, right? So we put a single crochet in the middle one like we normally would, okay? And then in this chain three, this turning chain, we'll just put a single crochet there. Okay, so it ends with two single crochet, all right? So it started with the chain one and the single crochet, and then we started dropping the bridge to get across and then it ended with two single crochet. All right, so we started with a chain one. That means that the next row will also begin with the chain one because we only have one row of chain one. So chain one, and then we'll turn our work. And you guys, this is where you repeat, okay? So remember I chained one and then I started filling it in. Okay, so go back to the timestamp if you need to see the pattern again. But just looking at what I've done, you can figure out what you should do next. I can see, okay, I chained one. Here's a chain three space, so I need a big fan. Here's a grouping of three single crochets, so I need to put a single crochet in the center one. Here's another big fan in there, in that chain three space, single crochet in there. Uh, another big fan in that chain three space. And then uh, single crochet in the end okay 
Also, something else that you can do to help you commit this to memory is just look at how you did it in the past row. So here I can see, okay, this row right here is going to be like this one, or I should say this one that I'm about to make is going to be like this one. So what did I do? Okay, I chained one there, and then there was this chain three space. Oh, I see. I put a big fan in there, so I should put a big fan in there. Then what did I do next? Well, go on here. Well, next, oh, it looks like I put a single crochet in that center, single crochet of that grouping of three. So that means up here, I need to put a single crochet. Okay, then what did I do next? Oh, I put a big fan in that chain three space. So that means I need to put a big fan there. Then what did I do next? Coming back down. Ah, here's the single crochet again. I put a single crochet in that center one. So that means I need to put a single crochet in that center one. Okay, then what did I do next? Ah, it looks like I put a big fan in there in that chain three space. So here's a chain three space. I need to put a big fan there. Then what did I do? Oh, I put a single crochet into the turning chain. So I'll put a single crochet into that turning chain. Okay, so you can always look at what you've done before. Remember, after all, it is a pattern to figure out what you should do just in case, you know, until you really commit it to memory. So hopefully this helps. As I said, go back to the timestamp. And yeah, I'm going to meet you once I get this completed and we'll weave in a couple of tells and be done. See you there. All right, you guys. So this is about how long it took me to crochet this scarf. Actually, it's less than this because the clock was running several times while I actually had to stop to do something. But yeah, this is about a two hour scarf. Okay. So let's finish this up right quick. Just so you know, I ended on a row where I dropped the drawbridge. Okay. Just to kind of give it a straight edge to match how I started it with a straight edge. Okay. And now I am going to chain one, cut my yarn, fasten off, <laughs> and then take my darning weaving tapestry needle and just weave in this tail. Okay. So I'm not going to weave in this drawbridge row because it's just chains and that will probably show pretty easily. So I'm just going to go through some nearby stitches in one direction, as you see. And then I'm going to take a slightly different path going in the other direction. Like that. Okay. And I'm just going to cut this down. And just like that. You don't know <laughs> if there was ever a tail there. Okay. You can do the same thing with the other end where you began. Okay. Just put it on your darning weaving tapestry needle. And then just go through some nearby stitches in one direction. Like that. And then take a slightly different path going back in the other direction. If you take the exact same path, then it's just going to undo what you just did. So that's why I always say take a slightly different path in the other direction. Okay. Once again, you'll cut this down. Be sure not to cut your work. All right. And you don't know that there was ever a tail there. Okay. For those of you who will want to know, because I know there are always those of you who do, I ended up making this scarf 40 inches long and I think that converts to like 101.5 centimeters and six inches wide which I think is about 15 maybe a little bit more than 15 centimeters okay so I was able to get this much scarf it's a very long scarf I mean you know I could make it longer I had a little bit more FYI if you're wondering so one skein is definitely enough but yeah it really is a beautiful pattern, this arcade pattern. Let me zoom out and try to get more of this on camera for you. I'll be right back. All right, this should be a little bit better, but yeah, as I was saying, it's just a really beautiful stitch, this arcade stitch, and it just crochets up so incredibly fast, okay? So yeah, I suggest you guys try it out. Follow 
you know the video closely if you have any questions you know you can always comment them and yeah just follow the repeat section of this video remember there will be a timestamp there showing where it begins follow that as many times as you need to until you get comfortable and you've committed it to memory it will not take long though okay that is going to be it for this video but you know i will see you in the next one in the meantime happy crocheting